Hi everyone, and welcome to part two of a video series that I'm doing of an ATV trip across Newfoundland my friends and I did in September of 2018. On this particular day, we went from Clarenville to Glenwood. Usually, we'll just continue on from our hotel, drive all the way through town on the rail bed, and continue on our way. But this year, we backtracked from the hotel a short distance and get on the transmission line. That allowed us to save some time by bypassing the town of Clarenville altogether. We didn't need any gas or supplies, so that was convenient for us. We also stopped in at Shoal Harbor Pond, took a few pictures, made a few other stops as well along the way. The nice thing about staying in Glenwood for the night instead of Gander is that it's about 25 kilometers closer to where we were going the next day. We stayed at a place called Misty River Cottages and it was very convenient because it's right off the trail as you can see here. This blue line is the rail bed. This is Misty River Cottages. There's a gas station slash corner store, kind of an all-in-one place. You can actually buy alcohol there too if you want. And then right next door to where we stayed is the Moosehead Pub. And it's convenient because it's walking distance and we were able to go in there, have a few drinks at night after we got in, and we also were able to get food there. This was day two on the trail and day three overall. We got up early and had a great breakfast at the restaurant at St. Jude's. We took a few minutes to pack our things, put our gear on, and then we backtracked about a kilometer until we get on the transmission line. Yeah. Who's that? I'm at the back. You're, oh, you're at the back, okay. Everybody's there then, perfect. So we're, this is the transmission line according to my GPS here, so we'll be going a long way on this. <laughs> it looks pretty dusty. Actually, it turned out we didn't go very far on the transmission line, only about 20 kilometers or so before it ended. If you don't have to go into Clarenville to get any fuel or food or supplies for the day, then you can just take this transmission line and it saves you a bit of time because going through the town is a lot slower than getting right on the transmission line. Plus, the transmission line is nice and smooth, a little dusty on a dry day, but uh, it's quick going. Oh, look at all that dust. And there comes Bill up the last there, I think. Oh, I hear someone. Yeah, Bill? I see ya. I just wanted to stop and get a video of everybody coming around the corner where all the dust looked pretty cool from here. It's not a bad road. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I agreed. <laughs> So we rode the transmission line for about 10 kilometers and then we took the green trail here which is a road into Shoal Harbor Pond and just before we get to the last part of the trail to take you into Shoal Harbor Pond there's a like a gravel and sand pit in there that we played around in for a bit quickly before we went down into uh, the pond to take some photos.
We love Shoal Harbor Pond. We camped in there last year for a night. You're not allowed to camp in there anymore, but we had to go in anyway and try to throw the drone up for a few minutes to get some footage, uh, mainly because I wanted to put it in this video because it's so nice in there. And then we left there after just spending a few minutes. We get back on the transmission line. And some of the transmission line looks like this. It was not really rough. It was nothing hard to get through. Uh, but it slowed us down just a little bit for a short time. And then it just all of a sudden abruptly ended, uh, which we were not expecting. And then we had to spend a little while looking for a route to get back to the, uh, to the rail bed. And it didn't take us all that long to get back. Got a freaking convoy coming. It looks awesome. We always stop for gas here at this Port Blanford gas station. Uh, there's two ways to get in. One is the paved road here you can see in purple and the way out is the orange trail. Uh, the road is about a kilometer in. It's easy to get into but it's not as fun as the orange trail. So usually we take the road in and then we take the, the trail back out again here. Actually I think I'm going to put it in low. It does look pretty muddy up ahead. I love having our Senna Bluetooth wireless headsets to communicate with one another. If you guys travel in a group, I can't stress enough how much fun it'll be if you get some of those for you and your riding buddies. Back to four high. Or, uh, Shortly after we left Port Blanford to get gas, we stopped at Terra Nova National Park by a really nice waterfall, and uh, apparently some other fellas had the same idea because when we got there, there was a group of other people who happened to be doing the trip across the island as well. One of the guys from that group actually came up to me and shook my hand and told me the reason they were doing the trip was because of all the information they found on my website and my YouTube videos. We've stopped here several times over the years, and we've always gotten some really nice photographs. And uh, this year, Bruce sent his new drone up and got some really great uh, footage that we were never able to get before. I think Bob takes even more pictures than I do. Blew it for you. <laughs> so after having a great uh, barbecue there for lunch, we get back on the trail. We headed west for about 50 kilometers, which is about 30 miles. And uh, now we're just crossing a bridge that's taking us into a little town of Gambo. And here's our fellows again that we met uh, back at Terra Nova. And uh, when we get to Gambo, if it's open, we like to stop in at the Trailway Pub. And uh, they had a nice patio on the back. We'll sit out there and kind of look at the water and chit chat for a little bit. And then uh, we're still about 60 kilometers away from our uh, stop for the night, which is in Glenwood. This was the final stretch of the trip for the day. And we kind of put the pedal down uh, in a couple places whenever we could when it was long and straight like this, just to make up some time because the sun was starting to set. It gets really hard to see when you're driving right into the sun. And we didn't want to have to do that for too, too long. Not used to coming in here at night. It's usually first thing in the morning we come through here. Wow. That's incredible. 
Misty River Cottages was just a short distance after this bridge, and as soon as we pulled into the uh, parking lot, we noticed a weasel had jumped on a little baby rabbit. When we pulled in, the machine scared the weasel off, so I went over and picked up the baby rabbit, hoping to try to save it from the weasel, but the damage had already been done from the weasel, and he didn't last very long, unfortunately. And then after that, we walked over to the Moosehead Lounge, which was next door, and we spent a few hours over there. And those people there treated us really nice, and we actually went back the next morning for breakfast there as well. This was the end of another fantastic day in Newfoundland. Stay tuned for part three, where we go from Glenwood to Badger with a stop in between at the Sabina plane crash site. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and if you liked the video, please click subscribe and the notification icon next to it.